Join me, ladies and gentlemen, in welcoming Jean Lean. She will be talking on and not or recipe for success in the new normal. A very warm welcome to you. Thank you. Thank you. Let me share my screen. Thank you. Thank you so much. So uh, there, there's a team right now. Let me assure you, there's a team right now trying to put the presentation up. Uh, hopefully we can do it soon. Um, but, but I think um, I just want to start by saying that today, the, the, the presentation that we, we are really wanting to talk about is about and, not or. So I'm not sure if you can see Jean, the screen we can right the now. now. Yes, absolutely. That's wonderful. But can you see me as well? Yes, we can. Okay, great. So um, th th this is something that I, I, I feel very, very passionate about. And it, it, it is really um, something I think is critical for us moving into this brave new more normal. It is the notion that we all have to think about and not or. If you look at 2020, th this is really a very, probably one of the most challenging year for any one of us. You see the story of polarization. You see a story of radical collaboration as well. I mean, when, when there's so different opinions, you see people coming together and create new things. A lot of us are in lockdown, but at the same time, you see this opening up to new opportunities everywhere. The, the new inventions actually happening in 2020 was tremendous. So I think in, in, as our physical world become anxious and constrained, we see virtual experience with charged with emotions and going more and more human. And I think that's the power of end. The power of end is something that we actually are doing in creative business a lot, right? You, you, when you actually get rid of the sort of polarization and division, and bring the old and new together, bring AI and artisans together, bring craft and code together, bring humanity and technology together, bring the virtual world, the real emotion and physical place together. Wonderful thing and in innovation happens. And it's not because of COVID. Actually, before COVID, we did a lot of this already. There, there are many, many examples that can remind us of that. So if you allow me, that, let me show you the, the first video actually tell you the, some of the things that happens actually starting by the power of end. Sorry, is there sound that people can? Um, no, Jean, the audio is not audible here right now. Can we request the team to screen share again and just yeah, let me let me share again. Let me share again. Hold on. It, it's shared by another computer. Yeah, so no yeah. Um I think you need to you need to allow the audio settings while screen sharing. Yeah, hold on a second. No problem. So while we have the video coming up, I want to request all our viewers, if you have any questions uh, for Jean, then don't forget to use the Q&A box or the chat box on whichever platform you're watching us. I don't think we're gonna get such a chance again. So go forward and send in those questions and to the team uh, screen sharing, request you to allow the audio while screen sharing.
we're going to be using something called Jet Lag Social Club. Well, I know that the the band was probably didn't give a a good um, call on the um, the total video. Hopefully, we'll put it somewhere for you to have a look at it with your bandwidth. But I think that the the point that we're trying to make here, actually, the power of Anne has created wonderfully interesting thing, great solutions for our existing economy even before COVID. But we also see that post COVID, during COVID, there are many, many interesting happening. Like the farmer actually go into, in China, go into a frantic live streaming exercise that everybody from flower to watermelon to anything that you can think about, you see farmers and their families going to live streaming business in selling things direct to everyone in the country and across the country. And of course, if you look at your um, our own uh, India situation, the 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 haggle the haggle um, boat uh, was flip card. It's also something that um, we can bargain the price on the on the spot. And these are wonderful things that happened pre-COVID. During COVID, uh, our agency 360i in the U.S. also did this interesting project called ChefBot. You know, everybody's cooking at home and what you're worrying about really is the food, food wastage that's actually on the top of the list of many people's mind. So ChefBot is a Twitter enabled AI solution. Actually what they can do is they can take a picture of anything in your fridge already, recognizing the, the object and push to you a recipe that will help you utilize everything that you have at your hand for something good home cooking, but also reduce food wastage. So these are all the things that have been happening around us that's actually using the power of N and accelerated by pandemic. So I think the, the key thing that we need to remember, and I think it's, it's coming, the future is here right now. It is, it go into a virtual experience economy. This is the economy that we have created and are creating together as we speak. A virtual experience uh, economy actually is a combination of the power of N and also how a virtual experience is real in your virtual, uh, in your real life. Um, examples that happens around the world, including today in our event, I think in the past, 12 months, all the live events has become virtual. So you see everywhere that there are examples of people craving for better than real experience. So better than real experience include live concerts, include live concerts, include uh, gaming. 
the the picture that I just saw just now is is uh, some guy called Trevor Scott, and that that's the avatar that he has having a live concert. The one that you're seeing here right now is 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 Ellie's um, live streaming concert, right? The 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 thing that she need to cancel her World War Two. So in October she holds this mixed reality virtual event live streaming on a Saturday and charge 30 US dollar per ticket for people to participate with her concert. These experience has reset people's experience, expectation to the experience. And that's a resetting the benchmark of what the future experience people are looking for when they're either in a virtual or live environment. So better than live and better than real has becoming a phenomenal in the virtual experience economy. But go on to the next one. You see, um, in in Japan and in China in particular, there is a trend that call a virtual idol. I think it started from Japan, but now it's very uh, prevailing in China. So there are virtual idol created for brand as brand ambassadors. Um, the the clients are talking about this because virtual idols obviously is someone that will never grow old. And because they don't have a real life, you don't have to worry about if there's any scandals happening to them. They can represent the spirit of your brand much better than sometimes a celebrity. So virtual idol is a phenomenon as embraced more and more by marketers. And it's accelerated by pandemic because, of course, you, during pandemic, it's very difficult to have a real celebrity endorsing your brand when sometimes video production is not allowed. So it's, it's, this is an interesting phenomenon. And you see more and more this uh, combination of real and virtual life. So for those of you who are on the teams of Microsoft course, you'll be familiar with this one. Um, if you see the, um, this, this is, you know, event, and if you look at the, 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 the audience and the seating, this is obviously a new function from Microsoft team. That when you're meeting together, instead of seeing photos, you can see people in seatings. And, and just like this core founder and CEO, Jason Citron said that it's clear that as people spend more and more time online, they want online spaces where they can find real humanity and belonging. This is a huge opportunity for marketers because this is where you can create that intersection and create a mixed reality world that make everything different, unique. And that's an experience that may, make people remember. In, in, in the actual practical way, many uh, marketers and brands are doing a lot during pandemic, for example, Cisco did something really simple. It is creating this um, Cisco Experience Hub as stage, uh, staff engagement need to shift to a more online community. They've archived more than 1,500 event videos and enabled 4,000K online attendees per event. This creates a sense of community in a way actually is easy to do, but you know, very, very important for us to engage virtual experience versus, versus the practical um, functionalities that we have to achieve. Um, the other example that we have is uh, just taking back to the um, uh, virtual mascot, virtual idol and uh, live streaming. The, in China, there's a trend of live streaming. You have so many social celebrities trying to help social commerce booming in live streaming to sell um, clients product. But during pandemic time, actually there's an issue. So everybody's on the, your pajama. You're not necessarily always camera ready when you have to do a live streaming event. So th there is a trend of using virtual um, idol to replace the, 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 the real celebrity what we did is we built a, a, a complete CGI movie studio. It's a complete platform for immer immersive virtual streaming. So Kyra is, is obviously a, a person and character that we create. 
that has the personality that can speak for some value. But there are various um, variations that can be linked with the real celebrity. So in the virtual streaming, a, a, a virtual character will always be camera ready and it can be placed in any studio environment where you're actually at your home. So this is happening and this is a combination of experience technology versus design. And what you'll see is that the CGI element in this. And of course, because of the streaming um, limitation of 5G, bandwidth become also a very important element to see how we can enable all those creativities to happen more with motions actually linked with the actual motions of the celebrity. So the next page, I want to show you some of the um, statistics. So if you look at the virtual commerce, you, you see that actually 100 billion US dollars spent by gamers on virtual goods in a year. Just in China, just by Generation Z, 4.8 billion euros is spent on consuming um, on virtual idols. So they pay and give money to virtual idols, encouraging them to, for the interaction. Uh, people in China follow one or more virtual idols nowadays, and the number is 390 million people. This has become a trend that's part of life. And the pandemic will pass, we'll, 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 you know, we'll, we'll come to the other end of the pandemic, but the consumer behavior will not change. It has moved into a virtual experience economy. So you may have seen and heard of this game called Tennis Clash. One of the combination of virtual commerce is actually the gaming element versus the actual sales of product. So Gucci partnered with um, Tennis Clash to create this game called Gucci Open. What you can do is, of course, in the game, you can buy a Gucci product. But when you go to the real e-commerce store or the retail store in places that are still open, you can also buy the, 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 the outfit that only appear on the Gucci Open in the past. And you can actually buy that for you to use and wear in your real life. This clash of real life and a virtual experience create a powerful virtual economy. So what it means for brands, there, there are obvious three things I think is extremely important. One is experience technology right now is a critical new creative toolkit everybody need to try and embrace. The second thing is we need to prepare for next generation of personalization. So the mass personalization and uh, programmatic and the simpler way of distribution actually need more personalization, more creative nuances because consumer's expectation has arised. The third thing is everyone to think of ways to embrace better than life events. So the event itself need to have a um, component to enhance the creativity because the sensory experience that any consumer is wishing to embrace, now the standard is really, really high. I think the virtual experience economy is a phenomenon that will go on for a long time as we move into a more mixed reality world. Also, one other element that's really interesting is what we call the contactless. To go to the next page, you see human contactless is probably the most rated feature for any marketing activities right now that usually need to have human contact. Um, key examples here and some statistics that you can see, the adoption of new behavior happens during the pandemic. Of course, the drive through for QSR the store pick up, all these things happens in everybody's life. We want to prevent personal service. We want actually demand impersonal services. So this happened a lot and put a lot of pressure on, actually even when in the market when they're open, for, for example, amusement park. One example that we had in Denmark is Tivoli Garden. So Tivoli Garden is a, a a very um, popular and oldest 
amusement park, a tourist attraction in Denmark. So COVID-19 poses a very big challenge. So through digital transformation program, what they've done is actually, they, of course, they, you know, designing an app, but linking the app with Bluetooth beacons and AI to ensure that when people are in their park, they enable social distancing, enable the social distancing queuing, and also when you enjoy things, making sure that in restaurant, et cetera, the booking and the, the right booking will ensure that you will be able to keep yourself safe. A lot of these activities are happening with in, the need for impersonal service. The other element that we can see is what we call remote consulting. So in the past, when we talk about AR, VR, we feel that it's a nice to have, but shoppers behavior has changed throughout the year. So shopper now will have shopped using AR by end of 2020 is 100 million. And this is a huge jump versus before. Four out of 10 users are more likely to use facial recognition in 2020. This happens in a lot of the stores that actually can use facial recognition to pay. The mobile payment directly use your face to do that because people want to avoid touching other people. And also a lot of CMO change their behavior as well. Uh, a lot of CMO are adopting VR. 27% said that they have adopted VR, AR, VR themselves. So one remote con uh, consulting element happening during the pandemic is um, when you're doing your own training and exercise. Normally you'll have a coach with you to help you to keep yourself safe and clear. But right now, because you don't have that, there are new platforms coming out. That this one is called Axer. This platform uses AI to track and correct your, your posture and your stance when you're exercising. And it's becoming popular because remote consulting is a key trend and demand from consumer today. Or else you can see there in e-commerce, there are many, many applications that has happened. L'Oreal obviously using um, their new acquisitions to have augmented reality to help you to try on new things. And this is something that's been prevailing across um, different applications, including Pinterest and other platforms. You see that brands embracing that, like Shiseido um, embracing the virtual try-on for any product that they use, they help to customize it while you're remote. So this remote consulting trend is linked with commerce more and more. And it's an important element, not just to support you during pandemic, but it's a resetting of standard in the virtual economy. The uh, Burberry using that, of course, in selling their product. So we see more and more of these implications. I think the, the more, most recent one is uh, somewhat coming from Intel. So Intel using, was in-store shopping really taking a hit during pandemic? How do you use an interactive showroom to bring the best of the in-store experience to digital. The, the combination of Intel and Dell um, help you to create an interactive showroom to create the, the potential in showcasing what the showroom will look like. I don't know what's the problem here, but yeah, maybe you can see it now that the, the showroom in actually helping you to demonstrate the product at the same time, one click away to sell. Those are the convenience, but also the content and experience that the consumer is experiencing and ex expecting to see. Um, car sales also change. Car sales has changed over the year, but I think it's, it's really accelerated by pandemic right now with Pers you know, personal shopping experience and combined with interactive showroom becomes such an important element for people to show you the car while you're not in the showroom, but you can actually communicate with the person to help you in showcasing where the car, the interior, exterior, and how, what it was like. 
It's a safe way of shopping, but it helps to really create both awareness, interaction, and also uh, conversion to the last stop of the sales. So what does this mean for brands? We talk about the first three elements by saying the second part of this contactless, the remoting and the interaction. There's three key elements I think brand and marketer need to think about. One is how to create services at scale because the personal service is required. But personal service need to be delivered at scale right now, especially because of the connection people require during pandemic. The second thing is the store now is a new studio. So the Cadillac case study is that the showroom is no longer useful for people. Now it's turning into a new studio for the, the salesperson to interact with you online while they show you around in the interior and the functionality of the car. The most important element I think here is that all experience right now can be a shopping experience because we don't go shopping anymore. We're always shopping. This is a huge element and a challenge to marketer because you can no longer thinking shopping and transaction conversion as a, only a last step. Actually, all content need to be shoppable. All experience needs to be treated as a shopping experience to help consumers in interacting and acquiring your product. So, so we have this notion that come out that we call total commerce. Um, because it's really important to think of commerce as a holistic experience that bring together the bought, the media experience, the shopping experience, and the way that you're actually um, helping you in doing the research while you're making your decision. So I want to, hopefully this video will work. Uh, I'll show you my last video. So I think the world that we're moving into is a world that really requires thinking. Um, it is a world that actually creates for and, not or. Actually, you need to push yourself not to make an either or decision, but always think how you can connect the creativity into a world that you can connect belief and behavior, connect innovation optimization, connect inspiration transaction, Make sure that what you say and what you do are consistent. Make sure that we're not just about me and individual, but empower the power of we. The world where brand and commerce really come together to create a holistic experience. And that's a virtual experience economy that we're moving into and the most critical element in embracing digital as a key pivotal element for our business. So, this is my last slide and I, I really thank you for having me here and all the good um, luck to everyone in the journey to be a creative force to embrace the never before post COVID. Thank you very much.